this week we're going to be talking about lesson 1.2 understand the irrational numbers so now we we talked the week before we talked about the rational numbers we this week we're going to be talking about irrational numbers and one more section we're going to be mentioning also but later on I'll talk about it so here's uh, the the difference between them so in, in mathematics we have something called rational and irrational we have real numbers uh, they call uh, you know do where do they fall uh, as a group so we're gonna be mentioning this in this week if, let's say if we got i give you a number like this one uh we say to say well 0 0.121 uh, 1, 2, 1, and then i'm gonna be asking you well, is this a rational number is this irrational number and uh, we're gonna find a way how to answer those things all right so Rational numbers, we have something called integers, we have whole numbers, and we have natural numbers, okay? So, uh, like I said, the naming is very important. Later on, we're going to be, ne you need to know the difference because on, in, on test exams, uh, you need to know that what's a difference between them because sometimes they mention them by name. They say, well, a whole number, an integer, a rational number, an irrational number, a natural number, whatever. Those things, you need to know the difference between them, all right? So exams, usually ACTs or, or, or SAT exams, they, they do talk about that. For example, here they're giving you an example here. They say, well, rational numbers are 4 over 5, for example, 0 0.75, 31.8. So why it's rational number? Like I said, in section the one section before that, we mentioned it, and we're going to re, re-talk about it when we get to it. And now, why a negative 5 is an integer? Why, for example, 16 over 4, negative or positive? why it's an integer, why a thousand is an integer, for example. Now, uh, 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 is zero a whole number, for example, you know? Uh, a natural numbers, a 19 is a natural number, and a square root of four is a natural number. Now, when we get to this other section, we talk about irrational numbers. So you can see that those numbers are irrational. Why they are irrational? In class, we talk about it, okay? There's no... Because we only have a five minutes kind of video, six minutes, six minutes of video. So any details, we, we usually do it in class. Here, this video just give you a glance about what we're going to be doing in on the in that week. Okay. So now, something we're going to go talk about is identify square roots as irrational numbers. Okay. So a square root, for example, a square root of three. Okay. Is it is it a rational or irrational number? Okay. So what's what do we what do we mean by perfect square? Okay, is four a perfect square? Is nine a perfect square? Is three a perfect square? So that's also questions that we're going to be answering. Now, also we're going to go to examples number three, for example. We're going to say, well, you know, what? I'm going to give you give you an example, and you say, you know what? Those numbers, tell me which one are rational, which one are rational. So, like I said, we're going to use the same techniques that we learned before from section. Uh, uh, one and section two all right and this where we kind of compare so now we can have a knowledge of how to compare them so on that on the basis of the knowledge that you have then you're going to decide you know this number is rational this number is irrational <clears throat> now so this is the end of the section okay now we go to the next section that we're going to be doing this week now we're going to be comparing uh, uh, the order of numbers now, you're going to say, well, it's easy. Right? We know that 3 comes in after 2, 4 after uh, 3, and all that. That's the order. But what about when they are fractions? How would you know? So you need to do a certain kind of calculation or a square root or whatever. I mean, it could be easy. It could be hard. It depends on the student. But, you know, we're going to be doing it together, for example. So, for example, if I ask you where does the square root of 64 falls on the, on the number line, Okay, you say, well, the uh, square root of 64 is an 8. So we know that it comes in before 8.1 and after 7.9, for example. So if I ask you, Tab, what about the square root of 74? 74, it doesn't have, a, you know, a, a square root. A, a, it's not a perfect square root, right? So it's not a perfect one. So we know that it's going to be in between certain numbers. So you need to be able to figure out where does it fall on the number line. So that's also we're going to be doing together. There's ways of doing it. I'll show you when, when we get to class. I'll show you how to do this. Okay. Uh, so here, here's a, this example is completely about comparing irrational numbers. So we know that those are irrational numbers. So we're going to make sure that there's a way to show you. For example, here, they're giving you an idea, a quick idea. Uh, they say, well, you know what? 
uh, approximate the square root of 32 by using perfect square. So you can say, you know what, what about if I take the square root out and I put 32 between 25 and 36? How, why did I choose? Why did I choose 25? Why did I choose the 36? Because now we have the knowledge as a grade 8 that 25, the square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 36 is 6. So we know for sure if I, if I put a square root on top of all of them and then I ended up with going back to my original question. So I know for sure the square root of 32 is going to fall between 5 and 6. Okay, so that's that's why it's nice when we do it in class. You'll, you'll, you'll enjoy it more because you'll do it on your own by hand and will be more fun. Now we're making it more complicated. We have pi squared. We have uh, a nine and a half. We have um, uh, 9.5 repeated. Uh, so this is now example three. It's going to be more. so every example that come, we come to after that becomes a little bit more complicated uh, just to make it more interesting. So because we need to do that. And that's the end of the section, by the way. So the next section after that, so probably we're going to be starting on the week after. If we have time, we'll start with it. Evaluating square roots and cubic roots. Okay, so that's how it's going to work. And uh, like I said, we do it by, by weekly and we'll, we'll go from there. Guys. So talk to you later. I'll see you in school. Bye-bye.